Yeah, Fibonacci, Fibonacci does play very slowly and methodically, which is both good and bad, right? As a viewer, it can be frustrating if he's going slowly, but it's also helpful if he's going slowly because it helps, like, you get to walk all the way through his thought process, and that helps you get better at the game. But if you like, if you're just like, oh, I'll play the damn game, then it can be boring. So the, I've been trying to strike a balance. We've had slower runs today than mine usually are. Holy crap, by the way, I hate these options. Probably just upgrade Bash. Let's see, Fire Elite, Fire Elite, Fire... Ooh, wow, lots of Fires, lots of Elites going into Hexaghost. I think we're putting on our Elite Hunting Shoes, boys. It's a lot of Fires, a lot of Elites, Hexaghost. So what we want most is damage. Upgrade Bash provides damage, which is great. We get to look at an early store so we can pick up Anger or Twin Strike or something. I don't want to do this, especially with all these elites. There's a path I could take that doesn't fight elites, but why? Why would I do this when I can get so many relics from killing three elites in this act? Yeah, I think we just upgrade Bash, fight some elites here. Potions are good for elite fighting too, but it's not consistent. And it doesn't help us very much against the boss, probably. Random boss relic. I think giving up burning blood is a terrible decision on Ironclad, so I don't advocate ever taking random boss relic with him. Unless you're on non-ascension, and then you can do whatever the heck you want and have fun. It's great. Let's get Bash upgraded here. And we're going to look at this store. See what it has to offer us. We might even go to the next store if there's nothing good here. We can look at two stores, which is pretty nice. Blue Candle with Necrocurse versus Giant Head? That sounds amazing. I need to know more about what happened there. So, for those, for those of you unfamiliar with that particular interaction, Blue Candle is a relic that allows you to play curses from your hand, so I could play Ascender's Bane. Um, it make me lose one hit point to do so, and then it exhausts. Um, the Necronomicurse that you get from taking the Necronomicon, if you exhaust it during combat, it immediately goes back into your hand. So that puts you in a situation where you can play the Necronomicurse, lose one hit point, pay no mana, and it goes back into your hand. And I guess against Giant Head, that ticks up counts of slow, to give him enough damage to win? That sounds amazing. <laughs> if you, um... There's other ways that particular interaction can be beneficial. If you have Rupture, for example, you can arbitrarily boost your strength at a cost of one hit point per. That's one way to, to do that. Um, am I taking two damage here? Yes. Yes, I am. So be it. So be it. Alright, I think we net zeroed there, or maybe net one. Blood Potion's nice. Clothesline is really good for the early elites. Yeah, if you have Sharon's Ashes, you get to do three damage per cycle. Um, both Carnage and Clothesline are good for elite fighting. I think Clothesline holds value longer in the later game. So we're going to pick up Clothesline here. Carnage is a card that is really good damage to mana early on. This card, if you want to fight Act 1 Elites, this is a great pickup. Um, if you want to fight Hexaghost, this is a great pickup. But this card just feels like crap to me in Act 2 and 3. I don't know why. It does good damage per mana, but that's just not good enough in Act 3. Whereas Clothesline, the weak it provides, is going to help us the entire game. So I'm taking the clothesline with the acknowledgement that it's a little bit weaker right now, probably. Though I do like it against uh, Lagavulin and Gremlin Knob quite a bit. It's a bit weaker than the Carnage, for now. But will prove more beneficial later Oh, and I want that Immolate so bad. This might be look at the other store kind of situation. Flash of Steel's not terrible here. No, 
Now, Flash of Steel's not terrible here. But I think I look at the other store. There's nothing here I really want. Flex is okay. Ghostly Armor's okay. Flash of Steel is okay. I think we can do better than okay, though. Alright, clothesline already putting in work. Feels good. Feels really good. Block potion? Okay. Pommel Strike's a good attack. Cycles the deck a little bit faster, does a lot of damage for one mana. I like it way more than these other two, and we do need more good cards to fight these elites with, so happy to add one Pommel Strike. Don't think I'd go for a second one. Okay, this is way better. Wow. This is much better than the last store. Battle Trance is probably one of the best Ironclad cards to pick up, especially early on. It's just free card draw. It's free real estate, guys. You just do you take it. And in conjunction with that, free cards are good. I like this on sale rage a whole lot. A whole lot. And those two together, I don't think I can afford anything else. So I'm probably going to take Battle Trance Rage here. We're going to look for cheap cards to add to the deck from here on out. Right, Anger would be really nice. I would love an Anger. What else would I like a whole lot right now? Uh, that's about it, actually. We'll look for Anger. Anger would make Rage feel very good. Rage, by the way, when upgraded is great. Whenever you play an attack this turn, gain 5 block. So as long as you're playing at least one attack, it's like playing a defend. And if you do two, it's even better. Rage Clothesline Strike is a lot of damage and provides a lot of defense. And as a hand, we can have kind of reliably with Battle Trance. Which, by the way, is going to let us cycle the deck faster so that Clothesline and Bash are consistently providing weak and vulnerable onto targets. Not just for Rage, no, it's going to prove useful in all sorts of situations. Rage is just the card that's going to go best with it, with the particular combination of things we have. We have a couple two-cost cards, we have Battle Trance, we have Ray, uh, Rage. Oh, I misread your comment. <laughs> Anger, Rage. What are we talking about? Cards that do things. But I like the Rage. Uh, that's not enough to kill, right? But I can block everything with the Rage here. Which is very nice. It's an example of a really good turn, thanks to Rage. Uh, there's the Anger I was talking about. Happy to add that. Might even want to upgrade it, truthfully. So I think Clothesline and Rage are maybe more priority upgrades, uh, or I do want to upgrade that Anger a whole, uh, a whole lot. I want to upgrade Rage, Battle Trance, Anger, Clothesline. Can I make that happen? Alright, so I guess the question of the day is, what upgrade is the most important for this Elite fight? Probably Clothesline. It's going to help a whole ton against Legavulin and Gremlin Knob. Against the three sentries, I would rather have Battle Trance and Rage upgraded. But I think against the three sentries, we're fine anyway. So for the other two, I'll upgrade the clothesline. It's a Leg of Ulin. I can do Bash Strike Anger. It's not bad. Given this is what we're going into, I'll accept that as an opening turn. Close line defend, I guess. We don't mind losing some health. I want to use this blood potion. The quicker I can end this fight, the better. It 
So clothesline there is objectively better than defend defend, by the way. Clothesline is 2 mana. It does damage, and it applies 3 weak. Since Legavulin hits for 20, it removes 5 damage from his attack that turn, and it removes 5 damage from his attack this turn. So... It prevents 10 damage, which is the same as the two defends, and it also does damage itself, which is really nice. Um, do I defend here? I think so. I think we can get through this fight without taking too much more damage. Uh, would have rather drawn the rage next turn. But that might be lethal. Hold on, 13 plus 7 plus 7 plus 12. 13 plus 14 plus 12. That is exactly lethal, right? 13. 20. 27. 39. Get wrecked. Ooh, bag of marbles. Really happy to see that. One vulnerable to all enemies at the start of combat. Sounds amazing. One of the best relics for Ironclad, if you ask me. It's going to make the elites coming up a little bit easier. Hits us, makes us hit harder on Gremlin Knob turn one. T strips the artifact off the sentries turn one. It's great. There's a time and a place for Clash. This is not it. A thunderclap might have value here, though. I like one cost attacks right now. Um, do I add Thunderclap to this? It's actually a tough question. I have mixed feelings about Thunderclap here. It's a little bit of AoE damage. It's more about the vulnerable that it adds. Gives us a little bit more vulnerable in the deck so that Bash doesn't have to be played quite as often to keep vulnerable up. It's nice against the sentries. Bad in most situations. I don't think we want it here. It's not a good source of AoE damage. Don't take up Thunderclap looking for AoE damage. Upgraded, it's not too bad. Upgraded is better, but we have other upgrades if we want. I'm not willing to upgrade Thunderclap. So hold on. One, two, three fires, two elites. I get one more fire going this way. Still going to fight two elites. Let's go ahead and upgrade Anger. I want some more damage, and this is definitely a really good source of damage right now. What's the best tactic against Gremlin? Gremlin Knob? Ooh, Rico Pillow. Against Gremlin Knob? I was hoping to be able to show that fight. Alas. Um, you typically don't want to block in the early parts of the fight. So, let's say you take a look at a card like Defend. You gain 5 block. And it's a skill card, so it increases the Gremlin's strength by 2. So, on this turn and every turn thereafter, he's doing 2 more damage to you. So, when you're looking at Defend in your hand, you have to ask yourself, is the fight going to be over in 3 turns or less? Because if the answer to that question is no, then Defend is actually t causing you to take more damage in the fight than it's preventing. Uh, you can look at it as prevent 3 damage now, take 2 damage every turn for the rest of the fight. So that's only worth it if the number of turns left in the fight is 2 or less. And otherwise, you just take the damage to the face. It feels bad to not block damage, but if it's preventing more damage down the road, it's the right choice. All right, so for these three sentries, I want to kill... Um, they alternate between the middle one attacking and the others debuffing, and the other two attacking, and the middle one adding dazes. So you typically want to prevent turns from occurring where you get attacked twice, and that means killing one of the ones on the end. I'm going to target the one in front because he has 36 hit points. It'll be easier to kill him. 
So we're going to bash him, hopefully looking for a kill next turn. Which I could get with, like, an anger draw. Or a pommel strike. Yeah, could probably kill him. Block, uh, five damage here. Some consideration given to striking him to guarantee the kill. But I think we get there anyway with Battle Trance and Anger. Yeah. So he's just dead either way. So Clothesline Anger is a kill. Pommel Strike Anger is not a kill. So I just Clothesline Anger Defend. Seems acceptable. to Rage Bash here. So Rage plus Bash gives me some block. Or I can Strike Strike Defend to take nothing. Or I'm taking one if I play Bash. Bash is probably worth taking the one damage. So I can probably get a kill. Do I take two more to make that way more likely? Yeah, let's gamble. We're going to gamble on killing the Sentry next turn when he's attacking me. So I'll take three when I didn't need to take any. And we get there. What are the sentries of artifact? It was removed by the bag of marbles. I applied one vulnerable to each of them at the start of combat. I am a little bit short of damage here, unfortunately. So we're taking six, which feels bad. Mega Vulnerable. Ancient T set, not great. None of these cards very good either. Might take Warcry. I'll take an unupgraded Warcry. Let's just manipulate our hand a little bit. We're gonna upgrade Rage now. Five block whenever we play an attack is pretty dang good value. Red Slaver, huh? You are a big jerk, Mr. Red Slaver. But we have five energy. I might actually just kill you. Hold on. 15 plus 9, plus 9, plus 9, it's 27, plus 12 is 40. Yeah, that's lethal, right? Yes. Get wrecked. Thank you, Ancient T Set, for actually doing something. I like Pommel Strike here, actually. In particular with Rage and Anger. I like Pommel Strike. Alright, Elite number three. We've been able to keep our hit points really high through this whole affair. We didn't even use the Block Potion. We didn't rest once. We're on 68 health. Like, we've just crushed these Elites with this deck. This is a really good start for Ironclad here. This is not the best opening hand against Gremlin Knob, that's okay. Okay, definitely just clothesline him in the face. Probably hit him with a strike. I don't mind taking some damage, we're going into Hexaghost after all. So any damage we take will be partially mitigated, because we're making Hexaghost's turn 2 attack a bit weaker. So, what could Battle Trance draw me? Nothing I care to draw. So we just eat that hit. Okay, so we're guaranteed to draw Bash next turn. This is definitely a situation where the answer to the question, is this fight going to last more than three turns, is Nope, so defending is actually worth it here. I could strike strike, and that would give me guaranteed lethal with bash, but I know I'm going to draw, you know, more cards than just bash. And there's two angers I can draw. I'm pretty sure I have lethal on him next turn either way, so I'm just going to block twice here. Warcry is not going to do anything, I want bash to be the top card. And it would make him hit a little bit harder, so we take five. And hopefully kill here. Yeah. Tiny Chest is nice. Fire Potion is nice. Shrug It Off is nice. I like all the card draw in this deck. Ooh, 
Ooh, and I like removing a strike, too. Hello, Cleric. Yeah, I very much like removing a basic strike from this deck. I will happily pay you for some purification, Mr. Cleric Man. I want to keep this deck nice and thin. So we're able to... We have a lot of card draw each cycle of the deck. It's an 18 card deck, and we draw six cards per cycle. That's... or even seven, actually, with Warcry. Kind of. That's very significant. Let's make it even more. Let's upgrade the Battle Trance. Although Pommel Strike's worth considering too, right? Both cases we're drawing an extra card, but the... Pommel Strike does one more damage. Of course, we're not always playing Pommel Strike, we are always playing Battle Trance, so I'll upgrade the Battle Trance. A tiny Chest Cursed Key with Juzu? You know it. Can't wait. Give me all of the curses. Oh, what a nice turn one. What a nice turn one. Oh. I don't actually want the Pommel Strike right now. I might not play that. I don't think I will. So we're going to Bash Clothesline him, so he's vulnerable and weak next turn. We have Shrugganoff sitting on top of the deck for his big attack, which I'll draw if I play the Pommel Strike, so I'm intentionally not going to do that. I want the defense. Rage might do all of our blocking for us, though. We actually had more block than we needed. Yeah, I just want to cycle through this faster. The faster we cycle the deck, the more powerful it becomes. Basically. Now I don't have to play Defend, so we just play a whole bunch of Strikes and Anger. We do a million damage. Keep him weak, that's what Grandpa used to say. Oh, that's a thick turn right there. The damage! <laughs> oh man, I like this deck a whole lot. So if anyone's wondering if Anger's good, I hope this is showing it off that it is a pretty good card sometimes. Ever since they buffed its damage twice to be 6 and 8 upgraded, it's a very good card. Especially on 3 energy. Oh, juicy. Am I just playing Strike, Strike, Strike? How's this working here? I think Rage Clothesline is enough block. I'll take two if I hit him with a Strike. I'm willing to do this. Amazing. Anger just punches Hexaghost right in his stupid face. So very hard. I think Demon Form is the only scaling this deck needs in order to turn it into a boss killing machine for Act 2. Like, what we just did will work j perfectly well against any Act 2 or Act 3 boss if we also have Demon Form in play. So I think we take Demon Form. Obviously, we just showed off that. Hallway fights are probably not going to be an issue in Act 2. Reaper doesn't do anything without strength, which we don't have, so let's get some. Oh, what kind of, what variety of energy relic do we want? Philosopher's Stone, Coffee Dripper, or Ectoplasm? Yeah, so the original iteration of Anger was 4 damage, I think maybe 5 when upgraded, then they buffed it to be base 5, 7 when upgraded, and I think it was okay at 5 into 7, and then they buffed it again, and now it's really good in a lot of situations. It's important to know when not to play Anger, and there are certain some circumstances where you don't want to. 
Coffee Dripper's not too bad here. I think we get through a lot of fights pretty easily. So, uh, to be clear for everybody, all three of these relics give us an extra energy at the start of each turn, but the Coffee Dripper prevents us from resting at rest sites, which is a little bit scary. We do have Sustain with Burning Blood, but we also have the Regal Pillow, so if we did want to rest, we would be very happy about it. The Philosopher's Stone gives all enemies two extra strength. That is terrifying. I would take that only if I had to, like my other options were Cursed uh, Calling Bell and, like, Pandora's Box or something. And then Ectoplasm gives us an extra energy, but we can no longer gain gold, which hurts us a little bit. A little bit more Tiny Chest, too, because there's, there's some synergy there. If we get more treasure, we're going to get more money. That said, I think Ecto is probably the least bad downside of these three, so we take it. I also don't feel like we need to spend money in shops to win going forward. We have pretty much all the tools we need at our disposal with this fundamental engine and the fourth energy. All of this card draw that we added to the deck has just got better. So I'm really happy with this pickup here. Take the Ecto. I'm gonna find thieves on the first floor, it is guaranteed. Happens 100% of the time when you pick Ectoplasm. So we'll lose some money to the thieves here. And then where are we going from there? Could fight an elite here. I don't mind fighting elites as long as I get enough fires interspersed amongst them. Oh, we can actually do three elites. Ooh, spicy. Two question marks into fight, into store, into elite. Or do I go two fires, then fight two elites? That's a little bit safer. Let's hit the double fire route instead. Or do I go elite fire, elite, elite? Is that even better? One, two, three, four fires and three elites. Versus... Four fires and two elites. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's take the take all the elites forever. I'm feeling really good against elites right now. We have so much card draw that we can very reliably get powerful things into play. Yeah, let's hit this early shop. Guaranteed thieves. Oh, single avocado. Hello, Mr. Avocado. I have exactly enough block for you. I'm going to bash your face in. I guess I'll take one damage in the so doing, which is reasonably fine. Do I pommel strike first? Yes. I was really hoping for, uh, like, Warcry. Not Warcry. I can just block here. Full block seems fine. That's lethal. Get to full health. Power Potion sounds amazing right now. But Fire Block is probably more hit points in the early fights. Power Potion is going to be better against an Elite. Take the uh, Power Potion over the Block Potion here. It's too late for you, Perfected Strike. You had your chance to get into the deck. I do like Havoc here. Kind of. We have enough card draw to make Havoc work as a way to get more cards into play. I have to upgrade it, though. What are my other priority upgrades? Warcry, Shrug It Off, Demon Form, Blocks would all be great upgrades. Pommel Strikes would be great upgrades. I don't think I want to add the upgrade debt that Havoc represents to this deck. I would love an uppercut. Actually, hold on. Perfected Strike... It's looking pretty okay right now. This might be a Perfected Strike pick. It's really late for a Perfected Strike, but we have two Pommel Strikes already. 
we have four energy already. They should rename to Anger to Anger Strike. Oh, we've got a lot longer than uh, one session left of, kill of uh, XCOM Killer Clump. There will be a lot more XCOM to do. I'm hoping to some for some more missions like yesterday's uh, landed transport. By the way, those those of you who are fans of XCOM, we also do play XCOM Enemy Within with the Long War mod on this channel. And uh, last night we had a heck of a mission, a late game landed transport that was a very close battle between me and five ethereals. It's totally worth checking out in the VODs. I'm going to take the Perfected Strike here. I feel like that adds enough value. It's a really good attack for two mana. What about XCOM 2? XCOM 2, once I finish that current Long War playthrough that I just mentioned, once I finish that, we'll be moving on to XCOM 2. Do I care about Demon Form against these guys? Like, they take half damage same time, I can't knock either of them out of the air, so I might as well play the demon form this turn. It's kind of rude. As far as enemy turns go. There we go. Give me that battle trance. Okay, we're, we're totally fine here. Let's take this jerk out of the air. And I can shrug it off, defend, and that's mostly good enough. When does the stream end? When I get tired of streaming? Uh, I might do one more run after this. I'm getting kind of close to my tolerance. That's only 3.30. Depends, uh, truthfully. Yeah, it, when it does. I'm feeling pretty good right now. We've been having really good runs all day. Close line will prevent six damage, which is not as good as shrug it off defend. So I probably just shrug it off defend. Yeah. Shrug it off defend. Pick five. Current uptime is five hours forty-one minutes. Oh, here we go. This is the kind of hand I was looking for. I can take nothing here, or one actually. Excuse me. With perfected strike, strike, strike. Knock this guy out of the air. Take a little bit. We actually struggle a little bit against this fight. Which surprised me. I thought angers would be good enough. Apparently they are not. There we go. It's really funny to me that Anger is uh, more damage than Strike. Doesn't feel right. Disarm is an excellent defensive tool. Disarm fits into, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, we need some AoE, that's true. I wouldn't mind a Whirlwind. Though, when do you ever? It's probably the only... Whirlwind or Immolate are the only sources of AoE I'd probably intentionally add. Flex and Intimidate are okay. We have the card draw to make free cards work. I'm thinking Disarm here, though. Disarm is a very powerful defensive tool, especially for Act 2, that fits into, as far as I'm concerned, any Ironclad deck. If you're all attacks all the time, take a Disarm. If you're a block-heavy deck, take Disarm. It's a really good card. Take Disarm. Buy the other one. I don't have any x cost stuff, right? I'm sad on passing up an opportunity to uh, to take Chemical X. Because I really like that relic, and I have yet to actually get value out of it. Do we add an uppercut? I would like to upgrade those Disarms. Just about before anything else. Disarms mean the elites are way less scary, by the way. We're definitely taking the second copy. I 
agree, Okami. I like achievements that cause you to try to play differently. I would like to personally see in this game an achievement for winning... Maybe not a run, necessarily, but let's say win a boss fight without playing an attack card, I think would be a cool achievement for this game. Twin Strike? Nah, I'm not feeling Twin Strike. It's a strike card, sure, it makes our perfected strike better, but it's just kind of a bad attack beyond that. We don't want to add Twin Strike just for the purpose of making perfected strike better. It doesn't add enough value, I don't believe. Does the uppercut add enough value? Yes, because we need ways to strip artifacts. And that does leave me with enough to remove a card. I might actually remove a strike, believe it or not. Strike is by far the worst card in our deck right now. And even though making removing strike makes perfected strike weaker, perfected strike is still a fine card. It does scale with demon strength to demon form, yes, but so does anger. We're going to play increasingly large amounts of anger as we go on in a fight. So I'm not worried about... like So if we're, if we're worried about um, scaling with demon form, then we're only worried about cards that are good in the late game of an elite fight or the late game of a boss fight. And I don't think that we're struggling in either of those scenarios right now. So I am going to remove... Yeah, I'm going to remove a strike. Right? We're not... Are we getting another store? Nope. All right, take a strike out. What? Okay, there we go. That was weird. Animation like glitched out. I'll take a question mark over a fight here. This is going to be a fight from the hard pool. I don't want to do two of those in a row before an elite. It's the Jax Addict. All right, see, this is a hard fight. And this is a really crappy turn one. Hold on, am I... Alright, so if I... <laughs> if I hadn't removed the strike, this would be lethal on the blue guy. So I'm feeling like... That was maybe a misplay in this exact situation. But... I still hold that that was the correct play. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Give me some cards. Here we go. So here's a great example of why disarm is really good. Seven times two, more like five times two. Um Yeah, actually put the bash on top, play this anger. Remove a point of plated armor. Okay, probably close line defend defend. This is gonna hurt a bit. Our two best defensive cards were on the bottom. Taking four. We're still in good enough shape that I get to upgrade at the fire. Uh, I'm going to shrug just because I want the card draw, not the block. We have block covered with rage. Rage, by the way, not affected by frail, which is very, very nice. Oh, cool. I get to close line strike. I'll take that over. I want to keep him weak. I don't want to take any more damage here. Frail has worn off. Should be fine now. Disarm, defend for blocking. Or shrug, rather, apparently. Forgot he was weak, so that changed the rounding on that. Yeah, Rage is really efficient block. Hey, Abu, yeah, we're still live. That is a thing. This is his big attack, and it's doing 12 instead of, like, a million. Feels pretty good. I think I just have lethal here. Yes, I do. Kill him with anger. Dex pod is nice. Ooh, and flame for immediate strength is pretty value. 
I like True Grid a whole bunch. That's more upgrade debt. This Perfected Strike is now looking like it was a bad pickup. I may remove Perfected Strike in the very near future. Sometimes you don't get the value out of Perfected Strike, and that's okay. It's important to not overcommit to it if you don't get offered the right card picks. So we might be removing that, because True Grit is going to cause us to remove strikes during the course of the battle, if we take that. Alternately, we can just go with the Inflame here for the immediate strength, which is really nice. It's low-cost strength for when we don't want to play the Demon form. I think I'll add that for now. And we're going to upgrade... Probably one of the disarms here. Upgraded disarm is going to make this elite fight a whole lot easier. Yeah, I'm very happy I upgraded disarm for this fight. So this guy does multi attacks that get even more multi as the fight goes on. And we have a really good opening hand against him. Because we can turn that 7 times 2 into a 2 times 2. Um, I get to play both of these, so I'm actually going to put a Sender's Bane on top. That feels really weird. I'm going to do that. Now he's doing a 2 times 3 It's so cute! We can actually make that a 1 times 3 if we make him weak, by the way. <laughs> 1 times 3 Aw. Oh, he's actually attacking me. Curses. Alright, we'll get the Inflame down. I'm taking damage if I... or more damage if I play Demon Form. So we'll just go like that. Yeah, Disarm. Really good card. I highly recommend it. To all of my friends. Oh, two times five. We have to actually block this turn. Which means still not playing demon form, sadly. I don't want to take wounds. Alright, do I have lethal? I think so. Yeah, I do with anger. Thank you, anger. Alright, easy book fight every time. Courier, best relic to get with ectoplasm. I like Metallicize a fair bit. Who are we up against? Metallicize is nice. Adds a little bit more value. Defensively. Might be a little slow. We still have a lot of card draw, though. I don't want to add too many things that slow this deck down. Might be unnecessary. That's how I'm feeling about... Uh, feeling about Metallicize right now is that it's unnecessary. I like Infernal Blade a lot. Only when you upgrade it, though. Which I'm not going to do. I'm going to pass on all these. Including that Heavy Strike. Which you might think with Demon Form and Flame we want. We don't actually want it. It's not that good unless you upgrade it. And if you have enough strength to make it good, at least for the situations we're going to find ourselves in, there's definitely a time and place for Heavy Blade. This is not it, though. Not with scaling strength. Let's upgrade the other Disarm. Blood Vial is nice. Don't think I'd take the Vampire Event if, if I was offered it. Okay, I'm happy to see these trio. Oh, I can kill um, both of them and disarm the Gremlin Leader, which is awesome. Disarming Gremlin Leader is really nice. He buffs his offense way too fast. How scared am I of this fight? Not very. All right, we're going to keep our potions for now. So I just kill both of these with two mana attacks. Disarm. Yeah, that's fine. Get that disarm down. Ooh, 
we get to play demon form. I think. Yes. It's better than the inflame. Alright, he's attacking me! For very little damage. Can I draw an attack? And yes, okay, I'm guaranteed to draw a strike. Seems pretty okay. I want to kill this sneaky gremlin here. I guess we're taking a little bit here. Yeah, because killing the sneaky gremlin is better than defending. We'll be weak next turn and be a little bit sad about that. Put Bash on top. Okay, Perfected Strike is still a kill, so we can Bash Perfected Strike. It's good enough. Okay, those are enemies I'm not very afraid of. Probably just start focusing on the leader here. I think we can kill the leader with demon form up and eight strength before the wizard lets loose his blast. So I think we just hit leader here. Generally, early on in this fight, you want to focus the adds down because if these guys stay alive, gremlin leader buffs them and then gremlin leader and all the adds attack you and you die very swiftly. But once you get to the point where you can kill the leader quickly, you want to stop if you want to ignore them and just focus on taking him out. Like so. And then the fight ends pretty swiftly in our favor. Ornamental fan is nice. Every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. We are doing that at least some of the time, so we will gain block from that at least some of the time. Exhum is pretty dang good here. You know why? Because it lets us play Disarm Plus a third time. Which is just broken, mainly. Um, yeah, I guess I'll gain five max hit points. Forgotten Altar, you are the worst event in Act 2, and I hate you. But I'll take your max hit points. And we'll rest at this fire before the Elite. All right, this might be... This is not a fight that benefits really much from playing Disarm, so this is probably just Bash Perfected Strike. Uh, no, let's, let's get the Disarm down. More defense is always something that you, you like. Gross. It's 15 damage I cannot avoid. I think I want to use a Power Potion here. Well, it's not 15, actually. It's 11. 11's not that bad. Very rude, Sneko. That was not the Pommel Strike. I meant to play the Pommel Strike. Whoops. I misclicked on my card there. Ouch. Taking a bit of a beating because of that. Please don't die to Sneko because you misclicked on cards. Sounds miserable. Okay, it's fine. We have lethal this turn. Everything is okay. Shockwave? Yeah, we're lacking a little bit in ways to apply weak vulnerable. As our deck has continued to grow. So I'll add a shockwave here. Rest up before this elite. We're a little sad we uh, botched that play. It's alright. Okay, these three I'm not too happy to see. How much do I think I need the Power Potion here? I think I need the Dexterity Potion here and the Power Potion for the next fight. I'm going to disarm the middle one because he's the one I'm going to kill last. It's a pretty sad first turn. Thanks to Ascender's Bane, but we're only taking two. This is not a very good second turn, though. 
Uh, Shockwave probably prevents more damage than I prevent by blocking with Ornamental Fan. So I think I Shockwave here, make them all weak. Hey Brad Strategy, I just, uh, I took like some extra damage against Sneko by whiffing the card I was trying to play with my mouse. Not too happy about it. That's how it goes. Next turn's gonna be ugly. I'm gonna be vulnerable. I can do 12 this turn. Probably just bash him. Or no, Clothesline's the most damage right now. Yeah, we wanna kill the red guy. Generally speaking, you want to kill the red guy first, because he can make you vulnerable. He can also entangle you, which prevents you from playing attacks. And in a deck like this, where you really rely on playing attacks to win, it's very bad. Alright, Rage is still somewhere down there. very bottom, unfortunately. Um, so I can kill with Pummel Strike. Block with Defend and Disarm. Take almost nothing. We're drawing this hand next turn, which I'm not very excited about. Take three. Three's not too bad. Actually, I could have taken one less by attacking again to trigger the ornamental fan. Should have thought about that. Actually, gonna war cry the strike on top of my deck so I can play an attack next turn. Should make for a no damage turn. <laughs> zero. I like zero as a number. Alright, we're not taking any further damage here. I might rest again before the boss. I would like to go into the Hyper Beam fight with full health. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm going to do this for fun. Alright, he does zero damage every turn now. I will BM him. <laughs> because I can. Ooh, or Calcum. On those turns we don't draw block, we now have block. How nice. Don't want any of this. How do I feel about 51 health? I really want Uppercut upgraded. I think I need to rest here. Not 100% sure of how this fight goes. Turn 1 Demon Form means I can probably keep my Power Potion, actually. I wouldn't have rested if I known I was going to draw Demon Form on turn 1. Or Calcum's bad with Fan. You're right, it is bad with Fan. It's actually like a horrible anti-synergy between Relics. That's kind of amazing. Ooh, and Flame on turn 1 too. Beautiful. Alright, I did not need to rest. Resting was overkill for this fight. 100% overkill. Alright, so the least damage taken here is an interesting route. Uh, actually, wait, hold on. No, never mind. I can't do the thing I thought I could do. Let's use a skill potion. Free limit break, huh? Or I can do the thing I wanted to do, because Exhum is free. Let's take the free limit break, just end this fight that much quicker. Especially because I can Exhum it, play it again. Yeah, I think that was a good choice. I'm just going to kill the Automaton now. I'm going to ignore the little side guys. That was a really good skill potion. 
I think I kill him before Hyper Beam goes off. Uppercut Shockwave? Yeah. Ugly turn. There we go. Close line's a bit better than perfected strike, but not really. It's a two mana attack either way. Not thrilled. Put the close line on top. Appreciate it if you guys would stop blocking for him. That's more like it. That's what I'm talking about. Hyper beam. More like die. Beam. <laughs> Beanfire's a nice finisher here. Immolate is good AoE. Good AoE is nice for this upcoming act. I think I might want Immolate. There's a lot of fights where having an AoE attack in Act 3 is particularly helpful. The three slimes, the million spiker boys situations. I would have liked to see Reaper over any of these three, but I will take Immolate. How do we feel about 5th energy? I think we want the 5th energy pretty badly. Lizard Tail's not bad. Cursed Key, though, is... Tiny Chest Synergy, for one. <laughs> and for two... It's a downside we don't have to pay any price for. Like, we can just ignore the Relic. Take our 5th energy, which we definitely want. So we'll go on 5 energy here. We've got an expensive deck. And a lot of card draw. Why did I pick the Perfected Strike? Because it's good damage to mana, and we already had a bunch of Pommel Strikes, so I picked it up, and I was hoping that I'd see more of them, because when you have Perfected Strike, the best card to add to your deck is another Perfected Strike. We didn't see it, though, so I'm not committing to it. I might even remove it if the opportunity comes up. Uh, wow, I can do a lot of Elites if I want to. How do I feel about Elites? Not the best. Not with this Disarm deck. The Awakened One, on the other hand, we beat. And this is another situation. I'm, I'm going to say it before it happens. If I get the boss portal event on floor two, I will click on it. We will go straight to the boss fight. With this. 100% of the time. Oh, we're forced to fight an elite. Okay. How does that affect my evaluation of the situation? Okay, we're going to this elite. I want to go to the store just because it's not a fight. Depending on how we feel hit point wise after this fight, we'll either go to this elite or fight rest and then fight this elite. I want to go into the elite with high health. Uh, I don't want to hit too many question marks though because we could get bad events. So I'll do two fights, third fight. Seems fine. Close line is a one-hit KO here. Reptomancer has multi-hit moves, I'll disarm her. Some merit to uh, war crying. Shrug it off on top of the deck, which I maybe should have done. Okay, let's kill this little dagger. We're gonna block with, uh... Oh, no, we're not gonna block with Orichalcum. Because the ornamental fan ruins Orichalcum. Whoopsie. Yes, Estonay, this um, this mob has replaced the the flame bruiser 
from the old beta branch. Um, used to summon flaming orbs. The fight's mostly the same. You get wounds instead of burns. She weakens you instead of burning you with the multi-hit attack. But it's pretty much the same otherwise. Huh. Think I want that? It's actually not bad. Right, we have six strikes. So this is doing six plus three times seven. 28 damage base. That's actually pretty good. But I don't think it's what we're wanting right now. I don't think we want that. Yeah, back when she had vulnerable, she was really nasty. You don't need another anger. <laughs> yeah, I think I pass on that. Um, hmm. Rip Bash? These are not the three picks I wanted. Bash has carried us so far through this, uh, through this game. Come a long way together, Bash. Is it time to say goodbye? What do I get rid of the demon form? <laughs> I think I can win against the boss without the demon form, truthfully. But I'd rather not. So, um, goodbye, Bash. It's nice knowing you. Block by virtue of killing. Hmm. Not a great turn. Let's see what I draw off pommel. Defend, defend. Probably over Aura Calcum. bit more block. Doesn't get me set up for future turns, but it's probably fine. Get Shockwave back if I care. Disarm you. Twice. Seems fine. I didn't actually want to play that because it's one more damage taken. So it was a misplay to play that defend instead of letting Oracal come block for me. Disarmed him twice because of this multi-hit attack, by the way. If anyone was wondering... Oh, there's Immolate. Got him. Strength pot over Essence of Steel here. And I think... True Grit? I like True Grit here. We passed on the True Grit earlier, and I can't remember why. But I definitely want it now. Right, can't afford anything here. Good talk. Wow, the Maw this early? Actually, Disarm ruins this guy, so we're fine here. Am I drawing demon form? No, exhum. Star exhum is really good here. This guy does multi attacks, so I'm very happy to uh, remove all of his strength immediately. Case in point. Okay, what are we drawing next turn? Strike. Well, I'm not going to need the defend. I don't want to redraw that burn, so I'm not going to play that. Where's demon format, though? It's not here.
block with Orichalcum. A little bit sad about that. Not sad about that. Demon form was right on the bottom, huh? Deeply unfortunate. Transient might wreck me, maybe. I don't think he does. This guy might wreck me if I can't get better draws <laughs> against him. Definitely might wreck me in that situation. Oh my. Now we're talking. That's the kind of draw I wanted to see. Don't think so to these offerings. Dual wheel plus is interesting. I don't think I want it. I definitely don't go that way. Do I fire before elites? but then have to do this gauntlet of question marks. I think so. Let's heal up here. Get an extra mana for the first turn. All right, it was Nemesis. We didn't actually need to worry. Nemesis is not scary for demonstrable reasons. Thanks to Disarm here. Dual wield the anger. Dual wield the anger. Where's that boot, though? We needed boot for this fight. Good talk, dude. Oh, you're actually hurting me this turn. So be it. Hurt you back. There's our demon form. Drawing into stuff that I don't want to play while he's intangible. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's risk burning the, the battle trance here. Seems fine. turns of this. Yeah, Disarming Zoom was definitely the perfect start. This guy's multi-attacks do jack squat now. Uh, fine with that draw next turn. Yeah. Alright, rip that guy. War paints. Another copy of Clothesline? Don't think so. Even upgraded, no. Upgrade two random skills. Give me True Grit Exhume. Close enough. Thank you. Pass on these. Alright. Ooh, this is a good open. Not the best open, but definitely good. to uppercut uh, Pommel Strike Strike for a lot of damage here, and don't take any damage. We got the best pattern. This guy can either debuff you with his Constrict ability on turn 1, 2, or 3. It's best when he does it on turn 3, as he's doing now. So we're very happy to see that. Uh, we're still taking a little bit of damage here, unless I play 3 attacks. Or we can disarm, that helps. Put Immolate on top. Yeah. There, now we don't take anything. Uh, 
No, one damage short of lethal. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> it's alright. It's not very high impact. I'll happily take a second shrug it off. We're a little bit lacking in block right now. And we can definitely use the extra card draw with our 5 energy per turn. We're gonna skip this, because we don't want to curse. And we're just gonna hit a bunch of question marks to the end. Don't want to fight another elite. Tiny chest, cursed key synergy. How many times can we get, the, get that to proc? Ectoplasm synergy with this event. Ooh, purple fire spirits, actually. Um, do I give up Immolate? The AoE damage of Immolate is going to be nice to take out the cultists in this fight. Might just lose the Perfected Strike. Or a regular strike. Perfected Strike is more expensive. We're going to lose it. So we sack a common card. We get five hit points. No problem. It's a nice turn to draw Immolate. Come Annihilated. Alright, now we just need enough block to kill him safely. And an attack in the same hand. Give me that daze back. Thanks. <laughs> Someday I'll have block and attack in the same hand. That day is not today. Here it is. Full health. It's potentially room for drop. No, we lost Bash. No drop kick for us. Uh, Headbutt's not bad. I like Headbutt here. Let's us redraw a specific card. Why not lose in flame? It's actually not a bad idea either. Truthfully, didn't consider it. it. Does buff us too. Probably play it for phase two of the boss fight. Oh, and a lot of the time against Awakened One, powers can still be worth playing. Like we're gonna use this power potion turn one of the boss fight, even though that's going to buff his strength. I think the power that we get is going to be more value then we give him. Uh, that'll be exactly enough, so I can strike once. Alright, immolate. Yeah! Okay, that wasn't actually a good hand. But I got to play immolate and feel okay about it. And beyond that, we're just taking some damage. Alright. Zoom Shockwave. Probably not. Can headbutt a card and redraw it. Oh, I can headbutt Immolate and replay it again. Yeah, that'll work. So we headbutt, get Immolate back, Pommel Strike to draw the Immolate, play the Immolate, end the fight. Dex Potion. Okay, I will take a Heavy Blade Plus for the boss fight specifically. Because this card is going to one-shot Phase 2 of the Awakened One effortlessly. Okay, we're definitely winning against this boss now. 100%. We're actually going to form a stratagem here. Take the 
dex spot for that stratagem. And we're gonna upgrade True Grit. Yeah, Headbutt's a really good card for a lot of reasons. That is a pretty good demonstration of one of them. Alright, what are our power options? Juggernaut, Corruption, or Combust? I'll take a Juggernaut here. Whenever we gain block, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. It's going to add up to quite a bit of damage over the course of this fight. I'll take that for free. I don't want Corruption. Corruption would be very scary. And Combust is pretty sad. So we take the Jug. I don't want to exhume the Shockwave. I want to exhume Disarm onto the boss. I want to play a limited number of Angers, but I do want to get some kills here. <sighs> wow. <laughs> what a sad turn. That's more like it. So we weaken him a bit. We inflame. Get rid of one of these defends with True Grit here. Shrink the deck down a little bit. So this guy's multi-attack is way less threatening when you can reduce his strength immensely. Like so. Playing the simulate? Probably not. Um. Yeah, probably not. I don't want the burn. Can we get a full block this way. Okay, at this point I'm looking to shrink down the deck. Oh, he's doing one times four. Can headbutt... What exactly? There's nothing I want to headbutt right now. Just want to draw into demon form right now. There it is. Get that played. Not going to damage him unnecessarily. We're going to set up for the second phase. It's probably overkill. Like, we're gaining a whole bunch of damage every turn. So we're doing fine, as is anyway. But I'd like to make this 100% guaranteed. So we'll play it a little carefully here. So the goal is to True Grit our deck down to a defensive core here. So that we can, uh, and let our strength build up to the point where his second phase, we can kill in one hit with Heavy Blade Plus. That is the goal. We might accidentally kill him before we get to that point. And so be it. If so... I don't think we'll have a hard time either way. Not the hand I was looking for. Killing him kind of accidentally with Juggernaut as we go here. So we're just uh, pretty well set up now.
Is that Trigrit again? Just slowly removing cards with Trigrit, letting strength build. I don't want anger, thank you. As you can see, he's been completely gimped by Disarm. It's a good enough turn next turn. Go to phase two here. So I've got Uppercut Heavy Blade for a million bajillion damage. Seems good enough. Oh, it's, he's dead. Good fight. Good fight. Nice try, GG Awakened One. How's that for a boss fight? <laughs> Need a strict 18 plus tag on the channel? Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely an NSFW display of power with this deck. Showed him what it looks like to be owned. So that brings us, what, 13-0 on this win streak that we've got going? Feeling pretty dang good about life right now. Got a few more runs in me, though, so we're not stopping just yet. 